Yeah. yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. <laughs> so, Alec Mile, yes, managing director of Miggle, mm -hmm. a Drupal shop digital agency source of great stuff out of Brighton. However, in the world did you come up with your company name? Well, it was it's just been there, a lifelong nickname. And um so in the end, like struggling for a name for ages, I think I woke up with a hangover one morning and was talking to a friend of mine on Skype saying that I was struggling with it and she just said, Oh, Miggle. And I thought, actually, maybe I should just call it Miggle. And um, yeah, it was the best idea that I'd had. So, right. that, that so sort of, if you can't beat them, join them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and it kind of works. It works quite well, you know, because it's, you know, it has an association with me without, you know, being exclusively about me, which obviously the business isn't, you know, we're a, we're a, we're a, we're a, we're a, we're a, we're a team and, um, Yeah, so it, it, it's, it's, worked, it's worked quite well, I think. All right, so Mr. Mile. Yes. Why don't you introduce yourself and, and tell us a little something about who you are and what you do? Okay, so, um, yeah, my name's, my name's Alec. I've been running Miggle since 2007. Um, I've been working in digital since 1994. Um, prior to setting up Miggle, I, um, I worked at Yahoo for seven, for seven years. And uh, which is where I've got most of my online experience. And yeah, I gave that up to go traveling with my girlfriend before we got married in advance of us settling down and having and having kids. And, and Miggle was really an opportunity to be able to kind of work closer to home, you know, rather than do the commute, rather than have to travel all around the um, world, which I had to do a lot of with Yahoo. So, um, so yeah, that's 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 how it all started. So we're here today to record a session for a little series I like to call Jams Dev Camp, where I invite people on who have conference presentations um, or case studies or helpful information that I think our community uh, would benefit from, and sometimes more developer-focused, sometimes more business-focused. Today, you're going to be talking about why your agency went with Drupal and, and how a digital agency can benefit from choosing Drupal and, and becoming an open source oriented business. I was wondering, what's your first Drupal memory? My first Drupal memory, I guess, my first Drupal memory would be probably 2007 when I first thought about potentially using it. Um, but then didn't start using it until 2011. And, and that's all kind of a key part of the story, I guess. And, um, you know, and I heard stuff about Drupal at the time um, and, you know, and heard stuff about other CMS as well. And, and it's amazing, actually, the, 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 the things that you heard back in 2007, to some extent, haven't changed that much in seven years, which actually shows how entrenched certain positions can can become on stuff i think um which i think is amazing given how fast the web moves so are you talking about uh fear uncertainty and doubt sort of negative things about drupal that people were saying no, no, i think it was more of a perception of when it was compared against um you know so the obvious comparison being against wordpress is that drupal was potentially much more powerful but it just had a much much steeper learning curve Whereas uh, WordPress was really easy to kind of get started with, but then you would, um, you know, you would hit a ceiling much, 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 much quicker. And I think back in 2007, when I first looked at Drupal, um, you know, I, I couldn't really get much further than the um, than the homepage. You know, I probably struggled to install it myself, given that, you know, I had fairly rusty development skills. I'm a, I'm a product manager by trade, not a not a developer. And um and then when I did eventually get it installed, you know, I'd I'd look at the the vanilla homepage, and I just couldn't make that leap in my head between that page and the sites that I wanted to the sites that I wanted to build. 
you know, and, and that was always an easy, easier deal with, um, with, 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 with something like WordPress. I think I also probably thought rather unfairly that, you know, things like Drupal and Joomla were really kind of crutches for bad developers. And, um, you know, because they, they, they kind of did it, did a lot of it for you. And, um, yeah, and I, I now know that to be kind of completely, completely wrong. Um, and uh, which, which is funny that I kind of had that perception. I think I probably picked up that perception from other people, which I find, which I find odd because I was, I was always a big fan of, um, of, of, of open source. Right. And a lot of what Yahoo had done was all based on open source technology as well. And, um, you know, and I, and I never really wanted to do anything else other than web development in open source when I started off with Mickle. But actually, for a number of reasons, which I'll explain when we go through the presentation, that didn't end up being being the case. So it's funny, I guess, looking at it as a crutch is, I guess, the, the mirror image of how I perceive Drupal. I mean, it takes the same information and and casting it in that light it's interesting because i always have considered it an empowerment story really great developers have put together a toolkit for those of us with lesser technical skills uh, along a broad spectrum of of less technically able um and empowered us to do great things and 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 realize our visions and that's really really exciting but i do know that um the decision to empower the end user and enable people who can, in giant air quotes, only point and click, um, that creates resistance among developers. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. it's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite Drupal module? Um, I like anything related to, 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 to Solar um, because you know, I think that what you're able to do in terms of kind of building powerful search experiences with Drupal is actually one of the things that really sets it apart from other CMS that you might that you might use. And given my kind of content background and, and given, you know, we did a lot of content work at Miggle in the early days, like for me, being able to kind of make content accessible by having a really powerful search mechanism is really fundamental to what the Internet's about. So, right. And then I guess if you put that together with the power of the views query builder, you're pretty much uh, golden as far as as uh, complex content presentation questions comes. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that, you know, that's um, yeah, that's one of the great things that that, 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 that you can do. You know, obviously, you know, you, you, you've got to get to grips with solar in the first instance and that, you know, that that that, that can take a little while. But um but yeah, I'd say that's one area that we're that we that we've been able to kind of specialize in, and um, you know, and creating those kind of search experiences is is is, is really good. So, what's something really cool that you've built with Drupal? Um, I think the coolest thing that we've built in the last year is probably a project for a travel company um, called Travel Nation. Uh, we worked on that project for about for about a year, and you know, it's a, it's a destination guide. It's um, you know, it has a round the world uh, flight chooser. Travel Nation's really a business about, it's not just going there and buying kind of one package. It's about, you know, putting together, you know, a once in a lifetime trip and kind of working directly with their um, consultants. And the, and the site really kind of serves to, you know, kind of show really great travel experiences. And, um, you know, and, and so, you know, it's really, it's really content rich. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, great, it's a great resource. Hmm. Off the top of my head, I think Miggle does quite a lot with the travel industry. I can think of, um, am I allowed to say? Yes. Yeah. Um, we do Air, yeah, we do Air New Zealand. We, right. do, um, we do a trade marketing site for Air New Zealand in UK, France and Germany, and also the US and Canada. Um, and then we run a vacation site for them as well. Uh, which is the only time as a Britain British person you'll ever hear me say the word vacation, um, and uh, and um, we also run a kind of corporate advantage uh, site for some of their for some of their partners as 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 as, as well. So so yeah, travel is an area that we've kind of done that we've kind of done a bit in in the in in, in the last in the last couple of years, and um, yeah, and other things as well. And I think this is the this is the other great thing about Drupal. You know, we've done a video on demand platform for NBC. 
Uh, we've done some e-commerce sites. We've just done a fairly big one for a distributor of, um, you know, electrical components. You know, they have over 200,000 kind of products in their in their in in their store, and and being able to kind of use, you know, Drupal Commerce and Solar to actually be able to combine those two things together to, you know, to drill down to the actual product you want. You know, that's you know, it's a really powerful proposition. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, so essentially, building dynamic catalogs as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think you know the the ability that Drupal has to kind of manage manage content, and then you know going forward, I think you know the really exciting thing about about Drupal eight and 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 headless Drupal. You know, we we the work that we did for NBC actually involves us. Um, you know, being able to spit out content to a variety of different devices. You know, um, mobiles, desktops, gaming machines. Um, and we've just recently started working on a project which we can't talk too much about, but that's about outputting a JSON feed, and that JSON feed is then used to kind of populate content across a range of different um, different devices. And I think you know, as the Internet of Things grows, then Drupal's ability as a content store to be able to kind of manage repositories of content and actually kind of point them at any IP-enabled device. You know, I don't see that you can kind of easily do that in other solutions um, that, 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 that Drupal might be seen as competing against. Right, and Drupal 8 is explicitly designed to ingest, manage, and output content, but it is not particularly prejudiced towards HTML or anything else. You really can um, use it as a as a, a content management engine behind um, a, a big data device management, websites, native apps, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things that I'm really excited about. Uh, Drupal already does it pretty well, but Drupal 8, it's uh, you know built from the ground up for that sort of a use case. What are you especially excited about with Drupal 8 coming up pretty soon? Um, I think I'm, I'd be really excited about being able to kind of show clients what they can do with inline editing so the whole spark initiative i think that that will be you know that, that that's going to be one of the kind of wow factors you know particularly when you know we're we're pitching to kind of like you know less technical people and they're you know maybe evaluating that against against other other cmss um you know we we lost out on a on a on a, on a job a, a couple of years ago to um to, to something that they ended up deciding to build in concrete five and um you know i looked at concrete five and it had you know it had kind of great kind of content editing tools but i was less convinced about it in 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 in, in the back end that the people that were kind of making the decisions on it were were, were doing so on on shiny things rather wow. than you know reliable things and um and i think that yeah the ability to kind of have you know, more powerful kind of content editing tools um, is is going to be the kind of thing that you know acts as a bit of a wow factor for people that you know make decisions on um, you know on, on 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 style as much as substance. Although I have to say that the 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 so I've been working in the back end of uh, uh, Drupal dot com, which is a Drupal eight site, fairly regularly, and um, the 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 day to day authoring and admin experience of Drupal 8 is very, very nice. It's really everything that I liked about Drupal already. And it's, it's got a bunch more, it's, it's the UX is nicer, it's smoother. Um, but this whole new, you know, inline editing and authoring workflow experience, I think is not only a great demo tool, but it really, really will make site uh, administrators and, and content editor roles. I think it'll make their day-to-day -day job uh, significantly faster and easier. So I think it's it's not just a shiny thing. I think there's a lot of practical value in that. Too. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And I think you know, at the end of the day, you know, and, and again, I think this is a key strength of Drupal. You know, the the ability that you actually be able to that you have using like roles and permissions, and then you know, kind of workflow modules like Workbench to be able to, uh, you know, deliver really bespoke, um, you know, uh, content management experiences. I mean, I, I think. The sweet spot for us is sites that have huge amounts of content that we make accessible by search, but where those huge amounts of content are often um, are often managed by people in fairly resource constrained environments. You know, so you want to be able to deliver those efficiencies in the um, in, in 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 the back end, and um, and I think yeah, inline editing, roles and permissions, and workflow really actually help you to be able to do that um, and and to, and to manage you know vast amounts of content really easily. 
So let's switch gears for one moment. I know you're going to address this at least tangentially in your presentation coming up about why your agency had decided to work with Drupal and why you've become a Drupal shop. Talk about being a business person in the open source context. Okay, so I think being a business person in the open source content to me actually goes hand in hand with being a business person and the the benefits I get out of that in terms of the community that I, I, I get through involvement with 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 with, with, with Drupal. So um, on on the on the open source side of it, what's great about selling open source to businesses is that you you're able to sell in kind of business continuity by showing that open source is something that allows your client not to have a dependency on you you know going 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 forward and um and i and i think that's kind of really key because we're always trying to sell our clients um we're always trying to sell our clients self-sufficiency and um and we talk a lot about operational freedom and i think the open source you know fits that really well and goes and goes and goes hand in hand with it and you know clients are often made a decision to kind of look at open source because they want to kind of get those those benefits and then it's key to making sure that we stick to those principles when we build sites to ensure that we deliver the benefits as a as a kind of business owner and you know and sometimes kind of running a business can be a fairly lonely place i get a huge amount of um yeah i get a huge amount out of the community um you know and 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 talking earlier you know going going back to the kind of you know is 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 drupal a crutch thing when when i when i go to kind of drupal events and i look at all of the you know the fantastically talented people that there are working you know on on the platform and and in its open architecture means that you know anybody can kind of work on the platform and contribute to it and that we're all pulling together to kind of make sure that you know we've got a shared set of tools to be able to deliver on a on a on a, on a wide variety of use cases and um you know and i find that a really reassuring thing because i'm running a small business but it sometimes it often makes me feel like i'm part of something much bigger and um, you know, and I've got certain go-to people in the community that you know we can always talk to about solutions. You know, we've got you know a variety of people that we look up to for best practice. And um, yeah, if we were working in a proprietary way, or even if we were working with a range of other um, off-the-shelf software or other open-source solutions, I don't think that I would get the same benefits out of the community associated to those things that I do that I do out of Drupal. One thing that I really, really admire and really enjoy is the parallel business layer in Drupal, the parallel to the technical layer. It's fairly obvious that in open source uh, technologies that the practitioners are sharing best practices and that they're talking and that everybody's working together so that, you know, never write the same code twice. If I fix a bug, it's fixed for you as well. If you, you know, make an initial version of something and I improve it, then we all get those benefits. All of that is pretty obvious on the technical level. In the Drupal community, if you go to uh, a, a trade show, you know, a Drupal camp or a Drupal con, you see all of the vendors, all of the sponsors chatting with each other, you know, forgetting to stay at their own tables. Um, you, you see people exchanging ideas. I know that, um, you know, product owners and architects of, of major Drupal products that I'm not going to name who are in competition with each other have sat down at sprints and solved problems together that make both of their products better. I really admire that. Yeah. How is it? And I don't know who your friends are, and I don't know who your arch uh, nemesis is, but, um, <laughs> you know, in the UK Drupal community, um, how is it when uh, one week you're at Drupal Camp London and you see, uh, and I'm just going to, you know, people who come the top of my head, uh, you know, you could see Ben Wilding and Paul Johnson and and Tim Deeson and you and you, maybe the four of you are having a pint one Friday and the next week you're, you're, you're pitching against each other for the same deal. How does that sort of go down in Drupal business land? Um, I think you have to kind of be quite pragmatic about it. I mean, I, I, I always refer to it as the co-opetition, you know, because we're competing against other, with each other, but then we're also kind of working with each other on stuff as well. And, um, yeah, I think that it's one of those things that, when we come together as a community, what we're really doing is is trying to kind of grow 
the overall overall pie you know it's every, everything we do that we work on together has the opportunity of making Drupal a much bigger a bigger um success story and um and if that happens then you know there should be kind of plenty of work to go to go around and the businesses I think that have you know really great genuine community involvement don't struggle to kind of pick up work and actually more and more we're seeing that clients are asking to see evidence and examples of community involvement um, as part of their decision making um, you know decision making uh, um, criteria and um, so yeah I think that you know with those people that you've mentioned you know we've 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 we've, we've pitched against them for projects and some we've won and some we've and some we've lost you know you're not gonna you're not gonna win everything sometimes clients might be looking for something you know slightly different you know sometimes you can maybe afford to kind of pitch things on a different level because it's about a sector that you want to open up you know so it's you know one 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 pitch is always so different from another and that you know you 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 want to win it for kind of different for different reasons potentially i don't think that you know what I like looking. I like looking at um, our competitors in terms of seeing what they're really doing well in terms of what they're doing for, you know, for best practice. Like Ben, Ben, for example, at Cameron and Wilding, you know, he gave a really good presentation at, um, at Drupal Camp London in terms of, you know, what leadership meant to him in terms of his business. You know, and you know that's that's an inspiring talk to go to. You know, you can pick up and learn something from 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 everybody that you that, that you that you talk you talk to within Drupal. And, so yeah, I you know I, I I relish the competition really. It's if you're in a competitive environment, then that's a good place to go. I'd, I'd rather be competing against people for good business rather than working in a technology in which there weren't obvious competitors because that technology would probably be a fairly dead one. Mm. So it just is what it is. I think. <laughs> I love the um, I I I generally operate on the assumption that everyone in the Drupal community is an expert on something and I can learn something from absolutely everyone. And uh, I just, it's, I, there's such a rich variety of perspectives and experiences. It's it, uh, pretty much every time I get involved, uh, you know, in, in another conversation, in another room full of people, I discover something incredible about one or more people. And it's, it, that's never stopped in all the time I've been in Drupal. No, I think that's true. I've, I've just come back from nice camp in New York and, um, I had an amazing conversation with a with a with a with a guy there who was, you know, talking about a real challenge that he'd had with his um with his agency, and I'd only met him, you know, that that day, and he and he was open about it to the point that he ended up in tears, and like, you know, it's, I think it's amazing that you can actually kind of get to meet people like that in the in in in, in the community who are so prepared to kind of share their experiences, you know, even 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 the painful ones, and um, you know, I was really appreciative of him going into that level of kind of candid detail about the issue that he'd had because you know you never know when that sort of stuff might happen to you and uh yeah i, I, I can't think where else you you know easily get that nice so listen anyone who's listening to the podcast of this we're going to cut out in just a minute and alec is going to do a presentation called How and Why We Chose Drupal, a uh, business person's perspective. He's going to talk about the history of the Miggle agency and how they went from uh, in-house proprietary technologies to becoming very firm believers in and contributors to Drupal. It's a great presentation. I really, really like it. I think it's uh, very worth your time to check it out. So we're going to cut out the podcast in a minute. Then you need to come over to acquia.com and find this podcast page. It'll be listed in the podcast stream. It'll also be listed in the Jams Dev Camp stream. And on that page, you'll find a description of the session. You'll find links, all the stuff we've been talking about. And you'll find video and slides embedded on that page from Alec's presentation. I really highly recommend you check it out. Alec, do you want to give us the, el the shameless elevator pitch for Miggle before we cut out on the podcast? Um. Yeah, Miggle with that's with Drupal experts delivering operational freedom. Um and we do a great job for you. All right. Hey, that was easy. So thank you, podcast listeners. See you next week.
Okay. Hey, good morning, Alec. Good morning. Explain, explain your incredible artistic talent that we see behind you. Okay, so um, yeah, we're, we're sitting in my home office and uh, it's covered from wall to wall for pictures with all of my, um, from all of my children. And um, yeah, the, 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 the one that kind of gets the most comment is the one of, uh, that my daughter did of, of, of Brighton playing Chelsea in which Brighton triumphs 30 nil. Um, <laughs> that legendary match. That legendary match, yes. <laughs> I hope I live to see it one day. <laughs> right.